Welcome to today's training on the AIM Location Data Validation Re Report. I am Amber Leach with State Construction, School, School Facilities Division, and Planning. My title here is Planning Policy Coordinator, and I will be working with the districts on this data to um, work with you on room usages that is the data that we will upload into AIM. And for those of you, this does affect your ca calculations on capacity, square footage, or educational square footage, and also the total number of teacher stations. Um, SCD, State Construction uh, Department, does communicate this data to WDE that they utilize it with their block grant calculations as well. The due date for the spreadsheet and data from the districts is to be returned back to State Construction Department by November 13, 2019 by noon. This gives the districts at least three weeks to go through the rooms and indicate any changes if there is any on the report and have that returned to myself, Amber Leach, and my email is amber.leach at yo.gov. And you may also contact me with any questions at 307-777-5946. And I'll assist you on situations or questions that may arise when you're going through this exercise. Um, many of you know that we do have our AIM database. And this is where we locate all of our data. And when we're working with location data, this is the room usage. It ties into what we call as usage codes, usage descriptions. It also um, ties in with location type, a location category which consists of educational, educational support, or non-educational. And also impacts your teacher stations. Currently, we have over 43,000 lines of data that will be updated. Now, granted, net not every single line will change. We're just looking for some of the room changes the district has delegated. In the past, we validated or verified room usages every few years or on an individual basis when we've done reconfigurations. We're looking forward to working with you on an annual basis to update the locations use year to year. So currently, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the spreadsheet that we will be emailing out to you. And we'll work through a little bit of the examples with that. As you see here, there are four tabs that we can be working with. The two tabs that you will have to enter data in are the very first tabs, the location data and modular. The other two tabs here are for support and information. Please understand I'm asking you at this time not to open it in Google Drive or uh, work it on the spreadsheet in Google Drive or Google Sheets. The reasoning behind that is we have a lot of drop down menus. And I also have some pivot tables working in the back to assist us on this information. Um, we provided it in this spreadsheet format, not only for yourselves to be able to um, sort the data and see it for yourselves easier. We also provided it, once you send it back, we'll be able to upload it with more ease running a script into our database, which will eliminate any kind of human error or just make sure that we are not corrupting the data. So on this very first tab, you're going to see that this is location data. The very last tab, I want to just point out that this has all of the usage descriptions, the usage code, the location type, location description, location category, and teacher station. Once you change a usage description, the sheet will populate with the associated the, um, categories that you see following and prompt the spreadsheet to update in that manner. As you see, there's at least 
314 different usages that can be applied to the rooms within your district. Um, two things I want to point out when we get back to the other tab to be conscientious of that we did change this year or adjust so that it made more sense. The very, very first one that I have is early child care. You will see now that we have two categories broke up because there was several that had teacher station tied to it or no teacher station tied to it. So we have separated those out and applied the cor uh, correct codes. Uh, one will be credit bearing, which allows if you are teaching students how to take care of kids in a room with children, that they will have a teacher station and that area will be considered educational under location category. Now, when you are having an area that is just child care, which is not credit bearing, where you are not teaching a student how to take care of kids, and it's more of a early child care or daycare or uh, Head Start, then you would be able to apply the early child care non-credit bearing, and that would change it to an educational support and take the teacher station away from it at that time. Please understand um, when you evaluate those rooms to apply the appropriate usage in that situation. The other one I wanted to point out specifically is also a, a situation in the same manner that we have the weight room. Again, one will be credit bearing where you're teaching and have it apply educational as well as teacher. And then there will be a weight room for non-credit bearing that would be not educational sport and zero teacher station tied to it. These were just two of the examples of things that we adjusted as we went through and seen that we needed to apply. But I left this tab out here so that if you are wanting to look at all of them in their entirety and make sure what you want that reflects correctly for that room description, you can do so as necessary here. Going back to the location, I'm going to go ahead and you can, We've got filters on all of these columns to assist you in sorting the data. I have pre-sorted towards the district for the spreadsheets to assist you. With that, we're gonna just go ahead and pick on poor Albany one, and I can sort that. I wanna go ahead and sort to vital elementary, and then that will sort off here. As you see, these different columns will give all information. Now, we're not asking you to identify or change any of those. However, if you feel one of those other columns are incorrect, you do have an opportunity to communicate with me in this very last column of comments. This will give you a chance and an opportunity to communicate any discrepancies other that you have on that. So as you see here in the earlier portion, bear with me, I went a little bit too far. We have the room number. We also have the actual um, floor to indicate and help you out. And then you see here the usage description. We also have, which will be helpful in it, is maybe even the location of the square footage that will help you identify the rooms. Um, also, we have sent, we will be sending out your floor plans in a Google Drive, and I'll go over that here shortly to assist you, or they are uploaded in name for your reference. But you can see if there was a teacher station in the past applied here. So let's go ahead and look at the second grade classroom that we have right here on line 10. As we come across, you're going to see there's two green columns. This is where the district can indicate and um, communicate any changes or any comments. As you will see, once we change something, this will change and show and indicate the other um, associated 
categories that will follow suit for the change and will be communicated. Once you come across here, it will pre-populate any changes over to the far right in that last column. So let's go ahead and just do a educational. We've got a second grade classroom, as you see here. We're going to go ahead and change it to a fourth grade classroom. Once you see the fourth grade classroom populate in the drop down menus, you will see the, the information will calculate across and then formulate over on the far right to the change. If it's if the blank, if this is blank, it will maintain the original. If it is changed in this column, it will populate the new change. Now, granted, let's just for exercise purposes, I want to show you, we're going to change this PE storage. And I know it's not the right thing, but I want to show you the difference of how this can change from having no teacher station to populating a first grade classroom. You will see that it will appropriately change to an educational space with a teacher station and indicate correctly across. Now, if you need to do anything, if you wanted to clear that space and maintain it back to the actual original, which was the um, storage area, you would do a right click on your mouse go down to clear contents, and that will blink it out and bring it back to original status. Um, so as you see, this can populate in different forms and ways. Um, maybe you've changed a teacher lounge, you've moved it back into maybe something to support um, maybe the healthcare. I don't, you know, there may be some other, or you've changed it to ESL second language for an example. So as you see across, it will pre-populate again, bring it into an educational status instead of the non-educational and giving a teacher station. So we can go ahead and clear content again, if that is not correct. We're not asking you to populate every single line because that's already done for you. Only the changes that you need to reflect and have us upload into AIM. So I'm going to go ahead and move into the second tab. This tab is covering modulars. And as we've seen in the past, only a few modulars have ever been measured and populated correctly in AIM. A uh, few of them have been either rule or have been in a Mercer study so that they have measured them. Um, due to them being a temporary building, we've not had assessments on them except for in some extreme um, situations. When you don't have a floor plan or measurements, we aren't able to upload it in AIM. And going forward, we're going to go ahead and have a future Condition assessments, we're going to go out and measure modulars that have educational space so that we can have the measurements to produce the actual floor plan to apply locations in AIM and be able to document. Currently, a couple weeks ago, I've been working with the districts going forward to start some of the data in this process. Um, as districts have indicated, some of the rooms and some of the buildings may be a one room. If they indicated that it was two rooms, we I have one room one, room two, and then they can also indicate. And if you will please review this information, make sure that I'm correct or populate it if it's blank that would be greatly appreciated. Again, you'll see that once we populate a room use in here, it will go all the way across again, giving us the information tied to that room as it is um, indicated here. Again, I did take some information that was already provided by districts and pre-populate some of the information 
Um, I do need you to double check me, make sure I did not get off on one, and I did break out the second row. For this process, I am going to be only asking for your main two, one or two rooms of what that modular is for instructional space or what that purpose is. I am not looking to try to break down the restrooms, the closets, or storage space at this time. The condition assessment will get the detail later, but I want to make sure that I'm getting what would be teacher stations captured at this time going forward and get it populated correctly for capacities and teacher stations for WDE and any other information we need to include. If you have any questions, um, if I've made a mistake and we need two rooms or three rooms because of the way of the um, modular is made up, just communicate with me directly and we will work one-on-one -on -one with each situation because we do know that we don't have drawings for everything at this time. So we'll get that captured and get that communicated. The next thing, again, like I wanted to indicate again, is the first tab and the second tab with location data and modular are the two tabs you fill out. The other two tabs are more for support and there's not in data. I want to go over SPED space, special educational space. In the state during, with our methodology, each room, each building is assessed one-on-one -on -one or per campus as well. We want to take, and I've pre-populated and taken last year's enrollments with also our SPED state average, which is calculated at 14.2 and when you take your educational enrollment of that building times the 14.2 that will indicate that you have at least 38 students for a uh, number of students to work with. With our methodology it indicates 67 square feet per student and calculates the spare, uh, sped space of, as you can see on this exercise, 2,245. With the pivot tables and everything else indicated, we have identified that out of the sped rooms and the three rooms that we total are special, one is special education resource room, two is tutoring, small group, and resource room, and three is PTOT laboratories added up. I'm going to go to my example on this other screen because it gives me a good outline. We're going to go ahead and utilize Bighorn 1. Okay, and it decided Give me just a moment. It didn't refresh from my last time I gave the example. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at this. If you are in green, you're within compliance of SPED space that's indicated within your school. If your school has yellow, that means that you have more rooms indicated that exceeds your SPED space, special educational space um, outlined. Let's go ahead and go to the main sheet. We're gonna go ahead and bring up, I'm gonna take my filters off here, bring it up to Bighorn 1.
okay? I know that I want to use Rocky Mountain Middle School High School was the one that showed and indicated that we had a little bit more space by 1,200. If I give my spreadsheet a little bit of time, like I said, we've got about 43,000 lines here. You will see the total amount of space is 40 or 3,462. When I go back over and I'm going to indicate the Rocky Mountain High School. And as you see here, I can spread it out so I can see it correctly. Once this populates again, I'm going to go ahead and take and scroll over to the indicated um, usage descriptions and utilize the sorts. Take this away, bring it down to our three choices or three sped rooms, PTOT laboratory. I want to make sure that I don't uh, choose restrooms. I want to use special education room, resource room, and then the tutoring small rooms. Once you do this, it'll bring up those totals. And as you see here, I can go ahead and highlight. And at the very bottom, my sum is 3,462, which was indicated on our other spread, sp spreadsheet that was for SPED. Now, just for purposes, maybe to get it back into compliance, I'm going to go ahead and we can change any educational or special ed room to open space, or I'm sorry, open plan instruction space for either ES or open plan instructional space for middle school, high school. And the reason is, is that those hold capacity where SPED does not. So I'm going to go down here, and I apologize, I got it a little bit smaller. I could see across there. Okay, so I've changed this, and as you see, it comes across and pre populates there. Now I can switch back to my sped space and if you go up to the ribbons up at the top you can hit data and refresh and you're going to see that now we're in compliance. Please understand this is on a one on one basis with each district. We don't always and we won't always be able to have this in the green and we recognize that because sometimes you will have a campus where one building is where you conduct your special ed um, instruction. And that's okay because the other spaces in the other buildings would cover that area. So that's fine. Um, for example, you have space, maybe your elementary is in the same area as your high school and you bring your elementary kids over to the high school for instruction for whatever reason. and if you totaled that space, that would match up and you would be in compliance, that's fine. Or you have a, com a campus that maybe you also conduct all of the SPED in one area and not in the other areas, so you have leftover space. Um, you will see uh, that occasionally NA because that building has not indicated any SPED um, room spaces, and that is perfectly fine as well. Uh, we will take each case on a case-by-case -case situation. And if you only have maybe allocation of two students and you actually have a room that maybe be 500 square feet, you still can be allotted at least one room for, if not more, depending on what the situation is. So please understand this is just a tool to assist us and 
work with us to know where we stand and make this efficient for both yourselves and myself to work with each other and know that we can work on that together if you identify something that we need to. And if you come back and we need to address something, I can work with you if we still need to as well. The next thing I want to go over quickly is that we do have floor plans that we did download in a into our Google Drive and we will share these on a individual basis with each district. Um, In each one of these folders, we have downloaded your actual floor plans. Um, as we open the floor plans, the folder, I will send it to you. Now, granted, I do recognize that as some of you are not able to have Google Share, we can be able to work with that. I can email them to you. Or secondly, if we don't, if you're unable to get this downloaded, pre-downloaded version, number two, I can email them directly to you, maybe in a couple emails, depending on how many um, files. These drawings will open up in a PDF to assist you when you're walking around and double checking rooms. Um, one thing I want to mention is sometimes our room numbers don't match your room numbers. FEA went out and did room um, when they did their condition assessments, uh, they did tie room numbers instead of having Mrs. Brown's room or Mrs. White's room. We have actual numbers tied to those. If our numbers differ from your numbers, that's okay. That's why we have the floor plan so that you can walk through and tie them in correctly. If you need to do so, we can go ahead and you can go into your AIM if you do want to download, go into Property Building Profiles. Once you get to your work desk, you will choose your district. And we're going to go ahead and pick on Albany again. That's the go-to one for here. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull up all of their buildings. We'll choose one of the buildings. And you go down to Related Documents off to the left-hand side. And when you see either JP or uh, I'm sorry, drawing DWG, those are the drawings and they'll indicate if it's the basement, the first floor, second floor, etc. Once you click here, it will open up and you can click to this and it will show the drawing or download or option to download so that you can print it off for yourselves when you do a walkthrough and making sure the rooms are correct. Another helpful thing in AIM, if you are struggling with the data spreadsheet itself and you want to see the report form of locations, you can go to back into your work um, desk is what they call this. And you would go over to the right hand column again under report list, go into location information report. Click on that, choose your district again, and I'm going to just choose one building just because I don't want to download too many. And again, you'll see it in more of a format as this, correct? And you go down and you can tab over using your arrow keys and you'll see your grand total of teacher station, square footage of the rooms added, and your restricted capacity. Capacity is the what the total room could have. Your restricted capacity is applied methodology of restrictions. Now, this right here, once we get your data back from you and we are able to upload AIM and get the information into the locations themselves, corrected and updated with that, we will print this off 
with an aim of, or a form that will say send out together and asking you to validate that this information is correct. I will send it out in DocuSign, review the actual location um, information report, make sure it's uh, reflecting everything correctly. If it is not, email me, communicate back to me so that we can, I'll pull the DocuSign back down and we can go from there, correct what we need to, work on those situations, and then resend it out for signature. This and your location report will be what we update and we will upload this into your facility plan this year as a captured document saying that we've got everything up to date for this coming year. And then we will also communicate the um, information to WBE for their um, block grant calculations. So you'll want to make sure when you're looking at it, the room the usage code is correct, usage description, the location type, location category, and teacher stations when you go across. And I apologize, I'll bring that back up. As I said, right here across, you'll see your usage description, the type, the um, category, and this is your location category, and then that your teacher stations are reflecting correctly as well. Today's training on this webinar will be posted on our website, and I'll go briefly to our website to show you where it will roughly come in. If you go to state construction, you can go over to facility or school facilities, drop down to planning and finance tab, and you will probably see it indicated under facility planning and the webinar will be posted here. I will follow up with a link in the email with that. Now, today, um, following this webinar, I will be sending out the email with your spreadsheet, as well as the sharing the Google folder with the floor plans or in an email form if you do not have access to Google. I just want to remind you again, November 13th, that Wednesday at, two th or at noon would be when this is due. That gives you three weeks. And I'd like to open it up to any questions or comments that you would like to make. Please go ahead and raise your hand or indicate on typing a question. Uh, Coley, I have you with a raised hand. I'm going to give you a live mic. You have a live mic, sir. Please go ahead and state your question. So our modular um, that you got information for, it is now not is it considered a modular now that we're using it for a rural school and that we bought that yes it would still be indicated as the, a modular and yes it will also be identified as a rural school as well okay, There'll be okay. so it's not necessarily a new building or you know coded that way it's still coded as a modular it is it should and i just found um, where we coded another modular as a building and I have to identify when you get into building type, if you look here, let me break this down. Um, you should have under building type, we should have, and I've got too many sorts going on, but if we had a modular out there, it should be modular. And then okay. I have a drop down where it indicates it is identified as a rural school, in town school, alternative in those categories. So, yes, okay. I'm going to keep it as a modular. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. I'm going to go ahead and mute you. Is there any other questions or comments?
Um, just wanted to comment here for myself is this is my first year working through this process. Um, if you see an opportunity where we could improve, I am very open to actually um, suggestions because we want to make sure since we are going out to do this, um, we want to allow ourselves to improve and make it smoother for both the districts and ourselves here at State Construction. Um, if you have any further questions or run into scenarios that we need to walk through, um, please email me, call me, and I can work with you on those. And then if we need to communicate on any other opportunities that can't come along that need some discussion, we can do so. So again, um, I will be emailing the spreadsheet out today to the districts, um, along with your floor plans will follow. Uh, a reminder again, November, or November 13th at noon is when this is due. And I do appreciate the time and effort you guys are doing to go ahead and go through and validate your rooms and make sure they are reflecting correctly for our database to populate that other information that we pull from that. Um, I see that we still have no further questions. Uh, again, please reach out to me at amber.leach at yo.gov or feel free to contact me at 307-777-5946. I look forward to talking to you and have a great day.